adventure fans, calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by, Dick Tracy is on the air. The makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, those delicious nourishing cereals that are shot from guns, bring you another thrilling Dick Tracy adventure. That's the way the big guns in the Quaker plant sound when they're making puffed wheat and puffed rice. Remember that the next time you sit down to a big dish of crisp, crunchy puffed wheat or puffed rice for breakfast. That special careful Quaker process, plus the fact that puffed wheat and puffed rice are triple sealed in moisture-proof packages, keeps Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice firm, crisp, and plump for you. And that's why they taste so much better than ordinary cereals. Puffed wheat and puffed rice are especially easy to digest, too. Each grain of sun-ripened wheat or rice is actually exploded to eight times its normal size when it's shot from the guns. Each tiny food cell is unlocked so that you get all the trigger-fast food energy quickly and easily. It's the kind of energy that helps make you strong, healthy, and alert like Dick Tracy. So join the thousands of happy puffed wheat and puffed rice fans. And if there isn't one of those famous red and blue packages in the pantry now, be sure to remind Mother to ask the grocer for some Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. And remember... There'll be a secret code message today, so have your pencil and paper ready. The black pearl of Osiris, belonging to an Egyptian society dedicated to the worship of the ancient god Osiris, is desired by a band of thieves and murderers. Dick Tracy has concealed the pearl in the secret compartment of a mysterious ring given to him by Umi Batik of the cult of Osiris, who told Dick it would bring him good luck. In our last episode, we heard how Dick Patton Jr., while dining in a restaurant, suddenly realized they were surrounded by henchmen of the murderous band. I've noticed, Pat, that we're being watched. Four different tables around us, certain shady-looking gentry have not taken their eyes off us. Don't look up now. No, I won't. What do you think we ought to do? Well, I'm trying to formulate a plan. We're undoubtedly after the ring and the black pearl. Yes, yes, we're surrounded, Pat. I can see that now. We've got to do something, Dick. I'll say. Get ready for trouble. We're going to have plenty of it when we try to leave this restaurant. Go on with your dinner, both of you. Pay no attention. Okay. Pretend you haven't noticed a thing. What? this dinner's got to end sometime, Dick. Yes, I know, Junior. By that time, let's hope we'll dig up an idea that'll get us out of here safely. Ah, that was good coffee. Finished, Pat? Yeah, I'm finished. I'll tell you one thing, though. I certainly didn't enjoy my dinner the way you evidently did. I didn't get much fun out of this food, either. Gosh, Dick, I don't know how you do it. We're surrounded on all sides by the, these men and... You calmly eat your dinner. And enjoys it, too. Well, why not? Nothing could have happened until we were finished and ready to go. Look, Dick, five or six of those guys are going outside. Yeah. Yeah, they see we're through with dinner and they will be going out any moment. Well, shall we go? Into the hands of that welcoming committee out there? Uh, could we have some more coffee? I really feel like having another cup. Oh, Pat, it'll keep you awake tonight. Unless I'm mistaken, you'll have plenty to perk you up in a few minutes. Gee, Dick, aren't you worried at all? Well, I'm trying not to be. If you try hard enough, you know... Here, I'll take the checks. Come along. Cashier's down this way. Two twenty-five out of five. Here's your change, sir. Thank you. Hey, look. Those guys at the other tables are following us out. Sort of nonchalantly. Not a very good way of showing nonchalance, is it? Just take your gun ready. Junior, I've taught you how to stay out of harm's way if anything happens. See that you do it. No, no, not me. I'm going to stick to you, Dick. You'll do as I say. All right, now. There's the door to the street. Let's get going. Car. Yeah, and a couple of fellows leaning against the fenders. Come on. Uh, just a minute, buddy, just a minute. Is this your car? Yes, do you mind? Maybe you don't know it, buddy, but this is my private parking place, see? I usually park me car here. Well, that's very interesting. Step aside, please. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? You know what's the matter, Joe, with this guy getting tough? Yeah, looking for a paste in the jaw. So happens I wasn't looking for anything. However, I see that you very possibly are, and so... Hey, oh, you can't oh. go that way. Oh. Get, get in, Pat. Junior, quick. Come on. Uh, get him, boys. Get him. Here they come, Dick. Uh, Let him have it, Pat. Oh. Keep behind me, Junior. Oh. That's the oh. for the ring. The ring, Dick. Oh. They're trying to get the ring. Keep slugging and stop talking. Okay. Get, him. get him, you guys. Yeah. The cops, they're coming, Dick. Yeah. Swing him kind of wild, aren't you, big fella? Here's the way to do it. Oh. Run, you guys. Run, it's the cops. Chase it. They're running away, Dick. So I see. Well, 
They're taking a few of our souvenirs and they're yours. Yeah. Hey, 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 what's been going on here? Street fights, eh? Well, we'll see. Hello, soon... hello, Donovan. Lovely evening, isn't it? Tracy, well, what the it's devil is All right, is he? Donovan, it's all right. Uh, the boys are chasing those rascals. They'll bring him in all right. Good. <laughs> Meantime, I've got hold of someone's coat. I grabbed one of those yeggs by the collar and he slipped out of the coat, leaving it in my hands. I wish we had gotten a fellow in the coat. Perhaps we will, Pat. Oh, Dick. Oh, great Scott, Dick. What's the matter? Your finger. Look. The ring. The secret ring of Osiris. It's gone. Gone. Gee, then so was the Black Pearl. Oh, they got it. They got it after oh, all. Oh, no, no, no. They didn't get it, Pat. Because, you see, you have it. I have it. Now, listen, Dick, this is no time for gags. Still in your pocket. The right-hand pocket. Huh? Let me see. Well, well, I'll be a cross-eyed owl. It is the ring. How'd it get in my pocket? I put it there. I slipped it off and put it in your side pocket. I knew they'd try to get the ring. They were sure I was wearing it. I didn't think they'd suspect you. Yeah, that certainly was fooling them, all right, Dick. Two of them made for the hand that was supposed to be wearing the ring. I'm, uh... I'm afraid they were a little disappointed when it folded into a fist. Yeah, I'll bet they were, Dick. If only we knew where we could get our hands on that gang. If we had some idea of their hideout. We do have, Pat. Or rather, we will. What do you mean? We've got the clue we've been looking for. And now, once again, we can take the offensive. I much prefer it as a fighting move to watching and having to be on the defensive. What is the clue you're talking about, Dick? This coat, Pat. The coat I took away from one of those gangsters. I don't get it. How can a coat help us find the gangsters' hideout? Well, of course, I'm not sure it will, but I'm going to have a try. Come on, let's get down to my private laboratory at headquarters. Why your private laboratory? There are certain things there I need, Pat, including a vacuum cleaner. A vacuum cleaner? Hey, as I said before... I know, I know. You don't get it, but you will. Say, Dick, what's the point of going over that coat with a hand vacuum? Yeah, come on, let us in on it, will you, Dick? Why all the little piles of dirt you put on the table? Why don't you put them all in one big pile? Well, you see, Pat, each one of those piles of dirt is labeled. Now, this pile here came from the right-hand pocket of the coat. Yeah? This one came from the left-hand pocket. This pile here is the dust I took out of the back of the coat. And when I empty this dust bag, this little pile will be the dust from the sleeves. All of which adds up to what? Well, Pat, you know that there's more to being a detective than hand-to-hand encounters with criminals. There are times when the fight against crime is carried on not by guns and forces science and skill. Some of the most brilliant wars against crime are fought and won in scientific laboratories. Now, I said that this code would lead us to the gang's hideout, and it's going to do just that. Yeah, now, let's see. Um, hand me that microscope, will you, Junior? Sure, I will. Here you are, Dick. Thanks. Now, we'll examine each of these little piles separately. Yeah. Have a look, Patrick. Okay. Well, what do you see? Oh, you got me. All I see are some particles of black stuff that look like hair. And some gray dust that gleams a little bit. And some more gray stuff that seems sort of dull. And some colored particles of... Well, well, it might be cloth. Is that all, Pat? Yeah, I think so. What else is there to see? Yeah, let me have a look, Pat. (laughs) Well, Pat, you'll have to learn to identify things like that at first glance. It took me several years of study, but it was worth it. Tracing the origin of these little particles, being able to build up the story they have to tell is is indispensable to a detective. Now, let me demonstrate. Go ahead, I'm waiting. Those black particles that look like hair, Pat, they're really horse hair. I'll test them later, but I'm sure of it without testing them. All right, horse hair. So what? Those gray particles that gleam in the light, they're particles of emery dust. For machines, Pat. Machines. Horse hair and emery dust. Come on. Now, these gray particles that don't gleam are particles of felt. Gray felt. Gray felt. I'm still listening. And those other little pieces of dust... The colored pieces are particles of very colored cloth. You see, Pat, your clothes pick up and retain the dust that is in the air about you. Examine the clothes of a man who works, let's say, for a coal company. And his clothes will contain coal dust. A man who works in a coffee factory will have particles of coffee beans in his pockets and in the dust of his coat, and so on. Okay, but where does all this get us? Well, Pat, don't you see? We've, we've taken from this coat particles of horse hair, emery dust, felt, and colored cloth. Now all we've got to do is to decide what industry uses these articles. In other words, what's made out of them. Put them all together and they spell zero for me. (laughs) Well, as I figured out, Pat, the one product in which these particles will be found exclusively, including the horsehair, will be mattresses. Mattresses, eh? Oh, say, that's right. I should have thought of that. Now what? Where do we go from here? Well, don't you get it, Pat? All this means is that the gang we're after probably has its hideout in or near a mattress factory. Well, I'll be done. Say, Dick, that's amazing. And a lucky thing it was that you got that coat. Well, don't let's get too excited about this. We may not be right. But we've got to find out how many mattress factories there are in this town. 
And we've got to check every one of them. But it's getting pretty late, Tracy. How long do you intend to stay at headquarters and keep these men here? We'll have to wait until I hear from Pat. We discover that there are only three mattress factories in town. There are three squads out now. Pat's in charge of the squad on Clay Street, and he's going to report back to me the moment he gets what we're looking for. And what are you looking for? Proof that one of those factories is being used as a hideout by the gang we're after. Factories are being watched very closely. They're supposed to be shut at this time of night. And if the boys see anyone prowling near one of them, entering the building, they'll know that that's the one we want. Uh, will Pat telephone? Yes. I told him to use the code. We're taking no chances on a slip-up. Uh, swell idea. Well, Tracy, I hope you're right about this mattress factory business. I know you're a bug on scientific detection and all that, and you've always been right in the past, We'll but... just have to wait and see. Mm. Ah. Yes? Patton speaking. Go ahead, Pat. Buffalo, 14, 1, 11, 18, 21, 4, in hurry. Right. Let's see that code book. Hmm. Buffalo, 14, 1, 11, 18, 20. Wait a minute, that's the end of that word. Buffalo, 14, 1, 11, 18. 21, 4. Ah, just what I've been waiting for. All right, men, let's get going. Is Dick Tracy on the right trail at last? Will he bring the thieves to justice? And what was the code message that Pat sent over the phone? Well, you'll know in a minute because it's time for our Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol meeting brought to you by the makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Those two specially delicious, specially nourishing cereals that are shot from guns. Okay, Junior. The meeting will now come to order. So get your pencil and paper ready, patrol member, because Junior is going to repeat the secret code message that Pat sent Dick Tracy today. Are you all ready? Here's the message. It's Buffalo, 14, 1, 11, 18, 21, 4. Better repeat it, Junior, so all the patrol members are sure to get it. Okay, Mr. Quaker Man. Are you ready, members? It's Buffalo, 14, 1, 11, 18, 21, 4. Now, when you decode that secret message, you'll know where Dick Tracy is headed on the trail of the High Mogul. And here's some extra good news, patrol members. Dick Tracy is going to tell us all about that big surprise tomorrow. Isn't that great? So be sure you're listening in, patrol members. Believe me, it's something you just wouldn't miss for anything. Do you know what it is, Mr. Quaker Man? Yes, Junior, but I promised Dick I wouldn't tell a soul. Ah, oh, come on, you can tell me. Ah, uh -huh, no, Junior, you'll have to wait till tomorrow, too. All I can say is, start saving Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice box tops right now. Because you'll certainly wish you had when Dick Tracy tells you what that big surprise is. Boy, I can hardly wait. And here's another thing, boys and girls. Every box top you save also means a lot of delicious, quick-energy breakfast for you and mother and dad. So have Quaker puffed wheat one day and Quaker puffed rice the next. The way thousands of boys and girls and grown-ups do. And that gives you a grand taste variety because there are two different delicious flavors of the famous cereals that are shot from guns. <laughs> There go the big guns now to remind you to have your delicious, nourishing puffed wheat and puffed rice breakfast regularly so that you get lots of that same kind of trigger-fast food energy that keeps Dick Tracy so alert. So look in the pantry to make sure there's some there. And if there isn't, ask Mother to get some Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice at the grocer's. And be sure to save the box top. <laughs> Adventure fans, calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by for another exciting Dick Tracy adventure tomorrow at this same time. That is all. Yeah.